Home Alone is undeniably a Christmas classic. How could anyone not love it? It tells the story of a young boy, Kevin McAllister, who's accidentally left behind when his family leaves for a Christmas vacation. To make matters worse, two burglars have targeted the McAllister house while Kevin is there by himself. Unfortunately, that's also where things kind of start to break down. Kevin defends his homestead by setting up a series of elaborate and dangerous traps in order to stop the bad guys from robbing the place, instead of, you know, calling the cops. And that's just one of the many dumb things in Home Alone that everyone just ignored. Call the police. What's the first thing that every kid learns to do when they realize they're in danger? Didn't they teach you that in school about 911, that you call if somebody needs help? Yeah. Yeah. Either Kevin didn't get the memo, or he just doesn't have the mental capacity of a four-year-old. Sure, the phone lines are down, but he knows how to get into town to go food shopping, and he knows exactly when Harry and Marv will be robbing his house. Kevin only dials 911 near the end of the film, after the crooks have made their way through almost all of his traps. Even weirder, when he finally calls the cops, he disguises his voice and tells them his neighbor's address? Why was that the plan? Did he think the cops would hear a child's voice calling for help on 911 and they wouldn't come? Or maybe it's because the cops in this town suck. Well, he's just home alone, and I would like somebody to go over to the house and see that he's all right, just to check on him. You want us to go to your house just to check on him? The cops of Home Alone are basically garbage with badges. When they're informed about a small child left without supervision, they send one police officer to the McAllister house. The cop knocks on the door and then arbitrarily decides Kevin's mom just can't keep track of her children because no one answers. Maybe that's why the wet bandits don't seem concerned in the slightest when Kevin makes multiple threats to call the police. Harry and Marv simply ignore Kevin and continue to invade his home. They're already guilty of breaking and entering, and they're attempting to assault a minor so the charges would probably be pretty severe. But because Kevin lives in a town full of Paul Blarts, there's really no reason for them to worry. Even the pizza boy has lost hope. Home Alone must happen in some dystopian alternate reality where the law simply doesn't matter. When Kevin plays the audio from an old gangster movie to make the pizza guy think he's about to get murdered, there are absolutely no consequences. Apparently, this kid just went back to delivering more pizzas and never warned anyone about the spray of gunfire that just took out half the neighborhood's inflatable Santas. Marv doesn't know how TV works. The Pizza Boy scene is weird, but Kevin uses the same trick on Marv as he tries to break in the back door. It worked on the especially stupid Pizza Boy because Kevin only played certain parts of the conversation, making the Pizza Boy believe that he was talking to a real person. And we all know the Pizza Boys are dumb. People said I was dumb, but I proved them. But when Marv comes to the door, Kevin just plays the movie. Sure, Kevin adds his own special effects, but has Marv never heard of a TV before? How does this work? Why is this happening? Is this real life? Uncle Frank is a monster. So we've talked about how the movie Suburban Hellscape is filled with morons, but we can't let Kevin's clan off the hook. The McAllister family is a bunch of hot garbage. While it makes sense that Kevin might get picked on by his older siblings and cousins, why are the adult McAllisters straight up bullying an eight-year-old? When it comes to the steaming pile of awful human trash that is this family, Uncle Frank lives at the top. When Kevin gets into a fight with Buzz, who was pretending to throw up on Kevin, by the way, some soda gets spilled on Uncle Frank's lap. Kevin didn't even do it. It was Kevin's useless dad. So naturally, Uncle Frank loses it. Look what you did, you little jerk. Nobody defends Kevin. Not his parents. Not even the kid from Pete and Pete. Kevin, you're such a disease. Frank is a middle-aged adult with some very deep psychological issues. Forget Harry and Marv. If anyone deserves a nail through the foot, it's Frank. The McAllisters may all be monsters. Kevin's mom has to rush back home because they can't get in touch with anybody to look in on Kevin. But how is that possible? The entire town didn't go away for Christmas. Kevin goes to school and even mentions that he has friends. So why can't his parents call one of their families or any of the friends of Kevin's 7,000 siblings? Is there literally no one in the entire state of Illinois that the McAllisters can trust to check up on Kevin? Kevin is gonna kill his family. Remember how Harry and Marv kept falling down the stairs because they were covered with ice? Or how the basement steps were covered in tar and nails? Kevin's massive family was basically walking into a death trap by the end of the movie. 
Kevin isn't exactly the most conscientious kid, and he's even pretty happy about the possibility that he psychically murdered them. I made my family disappear. So it's incredibly unlikely the kid cleaned up after himself. Hopefully Uncle Frank cracks his melon on those icy steps first. Pizza's here! That's $122.50. Oh, it's my brother's house. He'll take care of it. Your name's Kevin? You know what they're going to call you in France, don't you, huh? No. Yank! Ugh, we really hate that guy. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love, too.